to Big Daddy Bakes. I'm Big Daddy, and today we're going to be making apple bread. This is a yeasted bread which contains chunks of apples and cinnamon. It's really delicious, and it's actually really easy to make. So let's get to it, and I'll show you how to do it. For this recipe, you will need, for the bread itself, you're going to need a packet of instant yeast, three quarters cup of water, two-thirds cup of milk, and these need to be at 105 degrees. You're going to need three tablespoons of granulated sugar, one egg yolk. You're going to also need vanilla. Uh, this is a teaspoon of vanilla. You're going to need one and a quarter teaspoons of salt. I'm using sea salt. Four cups of all-purpose flour and four tablespoons of room temperature butter. Now for the filling, this is going to be rolled out and filled, you're going to need one and a half pounds of apples. Any apple will work for this recipe. Two tablespoons of white sugar, one tablespoon of cinnamon, and then you're going to need another egg yolk. All right, to start this recipe, I have my milk that's warm. It's right at 105, 106 degrees, so it's just perfect. I'm going to pour it into the bowl for the stand mixer. This is both my water and my milk. I just poured them together to warm them. And then I'm going to add the sugar. And I'm going to whisk that in. And next, I'm going to add in the egg yolk. And then I'm going to add in the packet of yeast. This is instant yeast, so we don't have to proof it. If you're using yeast that's not instant yeast, then you need to do this exact same thing, but wait to make the mixture uh, activate it. But this is instant yeast, so we don't have to worry about that. And then I'm going to start adding in the flour. I'm going to hold back about half a cup. Uh, this should make a fairly stiff dough. But you don't want to over stiff, so I'm just going to start with that much. I'm going to put on the paddle. I'm going to let that come together. Once it starts coming in together, then now I'm going to add in the salt. It's all come together. This actually looks pretty good. I'm going to start dropping in the butter one piece at a time and let it kind of mix in. When you do this, it's going to look a little weird as it incorporates the butter. Just slightly.
At this point, this is very much like brioche. Um, you just got to let it mix until all that butter gets mixed in. Then we're going to let this knead for about 8 to 10 minutes. So our dough has been kneading for about 10 minutes. I had added that extra cup of, half cup of flour because it was a little too sticky. So I'm going to take this out. It should be very elastic. Slightly sticky, not too sticky. And so I'm going to form it into a ball and put it into a bowl. We're going to allow this to rise for about an hour until it's doubled in volume. So in this bowl, I should be right up at the top when it rises up. And then I'll be back and I'll show you how to create the loaves. All right, so our dough has risen, and I cut the apples. We needed a pound and a half of apples, and that's, in this case, three apples. I cut them about half an inch up, and then I'm going to add the egg yolk, and I'm going to add the sugar and the cinnamon, and I'm going to mix them together, and I'm just going to use my hand mix this all together. The egg is going to help bind this all together. That's the reason we're using the egg. And you can adjust the cinnamon if you want a little more. You can always add a tiny bit more. I'm going to shape the dough. Here is our dough. I'm going to punch it down. I'm going to use a bench scraper, cut it in half. We're going to make two loaves. Put one back while we're waiting. I'm going to put a little bench flour down. So I'm going to roll this out. Trying to get a big rectangle, so that's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to put down about half of the apples. And then I'm just going to roll it up like a pinwheel. I have my 8x4 pan here, 
now this is gonna look weird but just bear with me I'm going to use my bench scraper and I'm just gonna cut these slices apart about half an inch if it cuts through the apple that's fine that's actually kind of what you want and then we're just going to randomly put this in the pan I'm going to cut these big ones in half I know this looks bizarre, but I think you'll, once you see the end result, it's actually really nice. Alright, I've got an apple poking up, I'm just going to kind of poke it down in there. Alright, I'll make the second one, just the same, I'm just spraying pans with baking spray. That one did actually a lot better than the first one. Spread our apple out. And I'm just going to start pinwheeling these. Have that done now I'm going to cover them with some wrap with some cling film and let them sit for 45 minutes to an hour and they'll rise up some out of the pan and then we'll talk about cooking so these have rested for about 45 minutes they've risen up till they're just about to peek over the top so i'm going to bake them in a 350 oven for about 40 to 45 minutes and i have the these trays on a sheet tray because you probably will get some juice spillage uh, so it's probably best unless you want to clean up a really bad mess later in your cooker So here is our bread after it comes out of the oven. It's interesting looking, but I promise you, it tastes really good. And you could put a little glaze on it if you want it to enhance the sweetness. You could uh, mix together a little, some powdered sugar, water, and maybe just a touch of maple syrup, and it would do a, 
a really nice glaze if you really want it that way. I prefer it without a glaze because I don't like super sweet things, but it's really a delicious loaf. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Big Daddy Bakes. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing, liking, and also click the little bell icon so you'll be notified each time a new video comes out. Again, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Big Daddy Bakes.